Hey guys, welcome back to Mo's Game Table. Today we're going to take a look inside Meltwater, a game of tactical starvation. It is from Hollenspiel, and I received it along with NATO Air Commander earlier today, so I'm doing another quick video of this. Uh, so that way you guys can take a look inside the box and see if this game uh, interests you. It is designed by Aaron Lee Escobedo, who it is uh, the first design from Aaron. And let's take a look at the back of the box. You get components, you get a 22 by 17 map sheet, 88 counters, eight page rule book, and 28 doomsday cards. The text on the back says 19XX, the unthinkable happens. The world is scoured clean in nuclear fire. The oceans are poisoned for generations to come. One last patch of habitable land remains, Antarctica. The remnants of humanity huddle, huddle together in a fragile patchwork of research stations and refugee ships. But even here, the Cold War survives and our civilization may not. Meltwater takes the nihilistic militarism of the Cold War to its logical and apocalyptic extreme. The result is a dark and brutal contest in which both sides seek the total annihilation of the other even after the world has been ruined, regardless of the cost in human lives and suffering. Antarctica's radiation-free zones shrink with every sunset, hurried along by combatants that continue to hurl nukes at one another, but the key to victory lies in forcing the enemy, soldiers and civilians alike, to starve to death. When the enemy's population, men, women and children, have all defected or died, the surviving superpower wins. They might even have time to celebrate in the moments before they, too, are snuffed out by the poisoned earth. Meltwater is a bleak satire, a compellingly nasty two-player game, and a pointed critique of unchecked military spending in an age where a fraction of that money could end world hunger. Hollenspiel is proud to release this stunning debut from designer Aaron Lee Escobedo. And yeah, this I, I was interested in this game not only because it, uh, the, the subject matter is, seems interesting, but I do like the whole bleak satire. Um, it's kind of like Idiocracy, the movie that, as I always call it, the movie started out as a comedy, turned out to be a documentary. Um, but let's take a look inside the book, Meltwater. We've got our 88 counters, our Doomsday deck, these are our radiation tokens, and we have, let's pour those out, we've got our manual and our map. So let's open up the map so you guys can get a look at that. Really like this color scheme on this map. This is just a really nice map. I love the color tone on it. Uh, you have different areas of Antarctica. This is it. This is where everybody's going to be. And this will shrink over time using the Doomsday Deck. This Doomsday Deck here will tell you areas on the map that will become contaminated and that will just keep shrinking over time. And you've got your counters which we already had taken a look at. You've got your I guess you could say NATO and Warsaw Pact or American Soviet Union however you want to break it down uh, units and then you have civilians as well and then some admin counters but let's take a look inside the rule book. It is a very short and concise rule book, only five pages. And you have a player aid on the back, a uh, very simple sequence of play, and your victory and radiation and support uh, laid out for you. You've got your objective, which is to annihilate the enemy. You win if your opponent has no surviving units on the map. Can't get any simpler than that. That's all about it. That's all it's about. It's just wiping out your opponent. Uh, game is played with one map sheet, a half sheet of counters, 56 wooden radiation markers, and a deck of doomsday cards. The counters represent civilians, soldiers, stockpiles, and dirty hexes. So um, you're also going to have stockpiles of goods, uh, which are these here, it looks like. That's your reserves of food, arms, and materials. That's what keeps you guys going as you are kind of expanding out on the Antarctic um, area here and you're trying to wipe out your opponents. This is the quick start setup. It, it explains to you how uh, each of your sides are going to, all the where all the counters go to get you guys, get you guys started out. It also has the uh, listing here for the order of battle as far as how that's going to go in text, but nice to see it in visual format. Um, then you have your turn sequence, you have your starvation phase, 
Uh, resettle or kill starving units, ignore starvation on your first turn. And then you have your action phase where you take four actions. Doomsday phase resolves the active doomsday card and uh, then you continue on to the next turn. But starvation phase, uh, it says here, thankfully the tundra can provide some sustenance. Meltwater and arctic fauna might sustain a small population. We can mine the ice shells for freshwater reserves, and with great effort, we might even turn the husks of the old research stations into functional greenhouses. But rationing is vital, and overwhelming demand could collapse our supplies and kill us all. In the coming months, we must make hard choices of human costs. So you've got to, you know, be concerned not only with taking out your enemy, but also maintaining your own population and maybe even sacrificing some uh, for the greater good of, of the others. So um, that's my assumption. I haven't played this yet, so I could be wrong. But here we've got, it says a, um, and it says an ice hex can support one additional unit. Uh, a hex, and this is, the standard for support is a clean snow hex, which can support two units. That is, if two, two units can occupy the hex without problems, a small handful of modifiers change that, and that is a hex can support one additional, an ice hex can support one additional unit, a hex with stockpile can support one additional unit. Um, and then if the US or USSR unit contains, uh, or occupies stockpile hex, all adjacent hexes can support one additional friendly unit. So there's some, uh, tactical setup with how you, where you put your stockpiles. Uh, that way you can actually have more forces around it or more people around it as well. Dirty Hex supports one fewer unit than normal and a Dead Hex containing a radiation marker cannot support any units regardless of any other modifier. So Dead Hex is, just like it says, it's dead. Um, then you've got starving units will attempt, uh, will first attempt to flee. So if you've got any starving units, the first thing is gonna be obviously you know, get away. They want, they want to survive. Uh, those who cannot will attempt to defect. Those who can't do either will die. So they'll either flee or defect to the other side. Um, and then the, the remainder will die. Then you have your action phase. You can take up the four actions um, from among the following march, transport, threaten, press gang, attack, militarize, which uses all four of your actions. Then you have the march action allows you to move uh, any number of units in a single stack can move to a single adjacent hex. It's um, got some a little uh, rules to that there as far as uh, where you can move, can't move. Uh, action transport, you can choose a hex containing your units in a stockpile, move the stockpile into an adjacent hex that also contains your units. Um, so you must have units present at both the origin and destination hex. And then threaten is where you drive enemy civilians out of a hex. Um, you choose one of your stacks that is not adjacent to enemy soldiers nor any dead hex. Then choose an adjacent enemy stack. Your stack must either have a soldier or must be larger than the enemy stack. Move one enemy civ uh, civilian from the targeted stack to an adjacent hex. This force movement follows the same restrictions as a move action. A threatened civilian cannot move into a dead hex or a hex containing its enemies. Uh, if the threatened civilian has no legal space to move, uh, it is removed instead. So basically you can either use military force or you can use the mob. You can have three, three to their two and you're going to force one of them out. So uh, then you have press gang where you force, uh, you, you forcibly recruit neutral civilians. And uh, that's where you're um, basically pressing these guys uh, to work for you. And then you have an attack phase uh, or attack action. Uh, clash with enemy soldiers at a cost. Choose one of your soldiers, not in a dead hex, then choose an adjacent enemy soldier. Remove both soldiers from the map. Then find the dirty hex closest to your attacking hex uh, containing your soldier. The nearest dirty hex may be several hexes away. If two or more dirty hex are tied, blah, blah, blah. Uh, play the, place a radiation marker in the dirty hex. That hex is now dead, and its neighboring hexes are now dirty. Um, so that's something, it's like when you attack, it's costly for both sides, but the, the payoff is actually spreading the nuclear, um, the radiation markers and uh, making all the neighboring hexes dirty. Interesting. Then you have militarize, which uh, is where you use all of your actions in the phase. That's all four actions in the phase. And you'll choose one or two of your civilians, uh, 
they are replaced with soldiers and these are also piece limited to components in the box so you only have a certain amount of soldiers that you can use um, but you're basically training up your civilians to be uh, from just civilians to military and then you have doomsday phase which is where you take these cards that I talked about earlier and you will put radiation hexes you will put these radiation markers these black uh, wooden discs and you'll place them in the hexes and that will signify dead hexes and then you also have a refugee hex as well and that is the end of that uh, of the rules it's very short rule book uh, pretty easy to, to to read through and and get get to playing it looks like within a couple minutes but that is Meltwater from Hollenspiel uh, it's another one of those games that I had said before that they're willing to take risks on unique games and first-time designers as well. So if you have a design, you might want to reach out to Hollenspiel and have them take a look at it. Uh, and they will uh, you know, discuss with you a little bit more as far as whether they're uh, interested in, in signing it or not. But um, if you don't already follow Hollenspiel on Facebook and Twitter, I strongly recommend you do. Get on their newsletter. Uh, they have got a a swath of titles that they just keep punching out titles and I don't know how a husband and wife team can put out so much work but I've been very impressed with it and I think you will as well uh, but get on their mailing list and uh, check them out and see what they've got because they've got games for pretty much everybody in their uh, catalog but that is Meltwater uh, give it a look if you like that NATO Air Commander go ahead and place an order tell them Mo sent you and that's that I will see you guys next time thanks for tuning in